Good morning. Thanks for joining me. Today we are going to make an in the hoop felt doll. And um, you can probably, after playing with felt for a little bit, you can probably use other um, other materials to make the doll. But felt is really inexpensive and kind of helps you get a hang of the thing. But you can make it where it's just the flat doll or you can make it stuffable too. So it's kind of cool. Um, I just have a 4x4 four four hoop, so I'm going to do it like you guys all have a 4x4 four four hoop as well. Um, but, you know, there's this is a very simplistic version of a doll. And <laughs> we're going to start today in paint. We're going to open a whole new one. We're not going to save that. And um, we're going to do two separate files. We're going to do the arms and the legs. And we're going to sew those out and set them aside. And then we're going to sew the head, well, we're going to sew the die line out for the head and the body. But once we sew the die, die line out, we're going to place our arms and legs on the, on the die lines in the correct areas for arms and legs and um, tape them down. And then we're going to put our fabric over the top and then it'll run a tack down, and that way we have our arms and legs already in it instead of having to sew them on afterwards. So I'm really excited to get started. Alrighty, so today let's go right into brushes, and we're going to use paint because it's free on Microsoft computers, and um, it's what I'm most comfortable with. I'm, I got into Inkscape a little bit, and it's so amazing but really over my head for a lot of stuff. So I've kind of, I got to learn that before I can start teaching with it, but um, we're going to use this. So if you're really good with graphic arts, you're going to be able to make some really beautiful things. And this is my version of a foot. No, it isn't. I probably drew about a hundred feet last night trying to get it right. Oop, I can probably still use that line. It's this toe part that I have a hard part, hard time with. I'm you know, not specifically, usually a drawer. So I would like to go ahead and grab that. I want to make it a little wider. Will it do that for me? Yep. Okay. Not too wide though, because, um, oh, we could make it longer though. Yeah. Give her really long legs. Um, we don't want it too wide, but you want to, you can make it wide enough to stuff a little bit of stuffing in them so the legs are more round than the doll that I made last night and the tummy definitely can put stuffing in, but, um, long legs will be cool. You can make the legs as long as you want and the arms as long as you want. And that's really fun. Alrighty. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this. Okay, now I don't have to do anything special with it, just side by side. They don't need to be really close because we're going to have to cut around them and we want plenty of room for that. Okay, the arms are the ones I kind of have a little bit of struggle with, but you have to draw them straight down. <laughs> Oops, I need to grab a brush again. Um, you have to draw them straight down, even though whenever you put them on the doll, they'll be at an angle. And my brain is just having a really hard time understanding that, even though I'm the one telling me to do it. <laughs> okay, and don't worry too much about the shape because you're going to kind of cut around it and it's not going to be very precise because it's felt and, um, you know, you'll just, you, it won't be that noticeable, I guess is all I'm saying. Okay, and again, if you use the same color thread, Okay, fine. I'll use the line tool for arm. Okay, and then back to my brush. Oh, I, that is not what I wanted it to do. Sorry you're sitting through my fumbling. Sometimes when we fumble together, it kind of helps. <laughs> Anyways, it does for me when other people are fumbling. Okay, so. It's, it's not perfect, and this doll is, you know, it's my, this is going to be my second one I've ever made in my whole life, so. Um, let's bring it over here. Copy. Paste. Get another one. And this one I can turn over, flip horizontal. 
oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Wait, that is what I wanted to do, but I also want to flip it vertically. Okay, and these ones, darn it. Sorry, I have to use the freeform selection. I want these ones to be a little bit closer than they are so that they all fit in the hoop nice. Okay, and the reason you can't do it with the square is because it'll bring the whole square over. So you have to just grab your your selection, the freeform selection. That way you can make them a little bit closer. Let's do that with the legs too. Oops. <laughs> Forgot that I wasn't using this square. Okay. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. I have struggled with my directioning since I was a kid. <laughs> okay. Okay, we want to kind of think about our hoop. We want everything to print out on our hoop nice and pretty. Okay, so now we're going to do the rectangular selection. Crop it. Select all. Copy. And open so art. Okay. <clears throat> So art is where we're going to digitize it. We're going to turn it into an embroidery file from a drawing from my brain. It's so fun. All right. This first week of homeschool has been really fun. We kind of just been going over what we're going to be doing this next year. And then we also went to the Oregon Zoo in Portland. It was really fun. And really fun considering he's a teenager and you think teenagers are bored of that stuff at, you know, their age. But he really was really into it. So it was a lot of fun. All right. So what I just did was a bunch of stuff without telling you. I cropped it and then I went into posturize to kind of blend all the colors together. And then I did the color reduction. And then I did the color reduction, made it down to two. And then I did the resize image. No, I didn't. <laughs> I cropped it even more than what we did in the other one. And now we, we don't need to do resize image right here, but we're going to because it's just nice to have it out of the way. So 3.9. Okay, that's for my hoop. Your hoop is bigger. You can make a bigger doll. You can make multiple dolls at once. Oh, it's just endless it's so fun you can make better hands you can make boots and shoes and stuff for the doll it doesn't have to be a basic doll like this so i'm really excited to see you know what you guys come up with i really 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 love whenever you share your work on the so art group it's really fun to see everybody grow and and learn and teach each other and teach me so okay here we go we're gonna we did all of that stuff real fast, and we're going to go right to Stitch Image. There's not a lot of work to this. You want to go to Outline Centerline. Running. We'll use two and 35. So if you just do that um, default, for some reason, it didn't save my settings whenever I did the doll last night. And um, it just did a regular running stitch with the default, which is length of 15 and the, uh, I mean, height of 15 and length of four. And it took forever to sew out. It took probably an hour. I don't know. It was just took forever. So we're just going to do a simple two and 35 on each of these outline center line. We're not gonna do applique because we don't need to. We're gonna, it's gonna be really quick. It's gonna cover the whole thing. So we don't need it to get, tell us where the placement is. And we're just gonna do it all at once instead of have a bunch of steps for this. For the body, it's gonna be a little bit different. Okay, so there should only be four stitches over here. It should say separation of two, which is also the height up here, and a length of 35, length right there. 
Okay, so everything looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna go to File, Save As. And I don't really wanna save a picture of this. Okay, so it's gonna go to this PC. And I'm just gonna save it directly to my removable disk, which is my machine. Oh, why is it not finding it? That's no good. Did it unplug? So that happened. I just turned the machine on and off and everything's fine now. Okay. Okay, so in here it's gonna let us save right to the removable disk, which is my machine. And I'm gonna name it Arms and Legs. I'm gonna double check my size right here. And right here you can change your size again if you decide that you want it to be bigger or smaller. Okay, and it's gonna join all its adjacent same color threads, but that doesn't really matter in this one. So, all right, we'll hit save. Arms and legs was successfully saved, and I'm going to go over to my machine, and it's there. I'm going to upload it. I'm going to sew these out, and I'll be right back with you guys. Cancel. Start here. Okay, guys, so I like to use the craft felt that they have at Walmart and Hobby Lobby, and also they have it at Joann's. Um, but this is the kind that I'm using today. It's really easy to work with and it's really light color. And um, so we're just gonna go ahead and hoop our stabilizer. This time I'm not using the garden fabric. I'm using the actual soft um, stabilizer that Pellon makes that you can use for like the backings of shirts and stuff like that. Excuse me, I want it to be soft and also I'm using a lighter color so I don't want the black to bleed through. Okay, and so I went ahead and cut them, um, cut down two four inch squares of the felt and um, one is gonna go on the top and one is going, gonna go on the bottom. And remember, we didn't do it applique, so we're not gonna do these in steps. We're just gonna do everything from the beginning. So go ahead and put one on the bottom, turn it over. And I used to use a lot of spray glue and it made my machine really ugly <laughs> and, and you have to wait for it to dry. And I've just been using tape and it's really wonderful. So tape one of your four by four inch pieces on the back. It's probably going to be like four by four and a half if you're cutting it from the square or from the rectangle that you get at the store. So just go ahead and tape it onto the back and then flip it over and then go ahead and just lay the one in the front down. You don't have to tape that one also, you just float it. And um, and so now you have both sides, it's sandwiched and it's ready to go. Because you don't have any like anything to put on it and hide the backing on, you don't have to do the applique. So I hope that makes sense. All right, and so I think that this next one, yep, this is the sew out. There's the legs and the arms that I chose with enough room in between them to be able to um, cut them out very nice and easy. And I didn't think about direction of the feet or the arms. I think that that will all come with professionalism. Right now, I'm just totally having so much fun coming from my brain. So here is her arms and legs before her body. And we're just going to set these aside. And in a second, I'll show you guys how to make the head and the body um, in sew art. And then after that, there's going to be a little section showing you how to do it in Sew Up Pro or do stuff in Sew Up Pro to add to it, to kind of enhance it, but you don't have to do any of that, okay? So just follow the, the same guidelines that you were given before um, for the four by four, okay? Okay, so now we're gonna work on the doll head and the body. And this part seems like it's gonna be the hard part, but it's actually the really fun part. And, um, you know, your first sew outs, my first sew out is pretty rough. My second sew out is probably going to still be pretty rough. My second sew out is this video. So your sew out might be kind of rough, but you know, just, you guys know different things than I do. 
and you know how to do things differently and you pay attention to different teachers differently. So we all are learning differently and, um, you know, this is just the basic stuff so you guys can take it and have fun with it. Okay, so let's do the doll. I'm going to give her kind of an oval face, not a totally round face. And you can make it, draw it as big as, or small as you want. I want to draw it a little bit bigger so that I can kind of see what I'm doing. Okay, so there's her head, her or his head, depends on what kind of doll. We're going to make a neck. Okay, so we're just going to take same, we just used a circle. Here we're going to take just a little rounded edge rectangle and just give a little bit of a neck. Don't want it to be too fat, but fat enough that there's some stability there. Okay, and don't worry about the lines. We're going to get rid of those in a second. Okay, and then we're going to use this same um, rounded rectangle, and we're going to create the body. Okay, so I have never claimed to be an artist, so <laughs> my stick figures are funky looking and everything, but... Um, you can do different things with the body. You can, you know, maybe use um, the triangle and make it have more of a waist. You know, there's a million things that you can do with it. You know, this is just basic. I'm going to stop saying that because I hope at this point you get that. <laughs> All right. So let's use our eraser and go in. And I'm guessing from what I saw of Inkscape. This is, you know, kind of the basic, paint is the basic of all that stuff. So if you can figure out how to use paint, you can use any of those other kinds of um, graphics things. So I know that looks funny, but on the doll and far away, you won't even notice it, the rounded neck thing. Okay, so make it all one piece. It's going to be one piece that sews out, okay? All right, and since we still have it so big in front of us, we're going to go ahead and make some eyes, eyelashes, and a mouth, okay? And hopefully you have better ways of doing this than I do, but we're going to just give her black eyes. I know it's kind of creepy, but um, I don't want to get too detailed because that takes a lot of time. Okay. Oh, no, my inner... Oh, I forgot to choose fill. Sorry. Okay, so you choose your two colors, and then I want it to be a solid fill. And I want her to kind of have happy eyes. I don't want her to have total round, creepy eyes. <laughs> Let's see. But on my other doll, I gave her happy eyes, or what I thought was happy eyes, and she looks like she's um, kind of planning some mischief. <laughs> okay, so there's my eye. I'm going to go ahead and select it again. Not again, but I'm going to select it, copy it, paste it, and my other eye is the perfect same size. And if you, you know, if you're going to be doing this for business, you're going to probably want to turn on the grid lines and get everything nice and perfect. Okay, so there's her eyes. I'm going to use her, this is the mouth, but no fill. And I want a perfect half circle for her mouth, for the smile. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to go to my eraser. And I'm going to start right there in the middle. And you can give her a little nose too if you want, but I'm not going to. She's just going to have a cute little smile. Okay. And then let's go ahead and give her some eyelashes. So, well, let's use our brush. We don't need to do that. But here's one of the things that I wanted to talk about. So when we do the eyelashes, we want it to be a different color than the eyes themselves because the eyes themselves are going to be a fill stitch and we want our eyelashes to be a satin stitch. So I'm picking a color that's just, oh, you know what? We're going to change colors when we get into sew art. 
So just make sure that it's not touching the eye like that one is down there. Okay, I'm not the best eyelash drawer, but I'm not giving her those eye eyebrows. <laughs> those are terrible. I think I'm actually going to take this one because I like that one the best. Freeform, select it. Maybe I can reuse it. Copy, paste. Ooh, why did it do that? Never mind. Oh, you do. Okay, that was a fluke idea. Okay, I'm just going to give her four of them because this is just getting crazy. One, two, three, four. Okay. All right, so let's zoom out. And there we go. We have our little boxy doll body. Okay. You can make the box, uh, the, <laughs> the box, the doll smaller or bigger if you want. Um, it's all completely, totally up to you. All right. So she's done. We're going to go select. And we're going to put a big square around her. Copy. You could crop as well. And then select all. Copy, open so art, open a new one in so art. Okay, and then edit, paste, and that brings in our doll body. Okay, we're gonna have to zoom out so we can work on her, she's huge. Okay, so let's crop the sides. Why did it do that? My cat is trying to climb over here to get a kiss, and he's knocking everything over. <laughs> well, I don't know if he's trying to get a kiss, but he's definitely being intrusive and loud. Okay, so we're going to just crop the sides. Bring it in a little bit. That way the program is only working with what's, what you're wanting to work with. It's not counting all the white pixels in the background that you're not bugging with. There you go, buddy. Okay. okay, so we don't have to resize her now, but I'm going to just to be safe because she is, like I said, huge. Oh, wait, no, we're not going to resize her because we're going to open her up in Sew It Pro. But let's go ahead and resize her anyways to at least six inches so Sew It Pro can work with her better. Okay, now let's go back up to 100. Okay, so we're in here, and normally this is a two color or three color because we chose that extra gray. Um, let's go up here, it's probably going to say 16 colors. I don't know why, that's crazy. Pixels is why, but just weird. Okay, whatever. So let's go ahead and posturize it to kind of soften everything. And it looks like it took away my eyebrows. <laughs> So let's not do that. So let's get out of posturize and let's go to the numbers and let's just go to two. There, it didn't change anything. And now let's go in deep to these beautiful little eyelashes here because we wanna be able to make them two different kind of stitches, but we want them both to be black. We're going to cancel that. We're going to grab our bucket. Water. Water. Why did I choose blue? That is so weird. Okay, I'm going to choose a light gray. Uh, I think I got going to the beach on my mind. Okay, and the reason why we didn't do that in paint is because it would have pixelized and turned it into a million colors and we we're trying to reduce colors and all that stuff. So now we're going to go into our eyelashes and I know this is kind of really detailed but we want to take this same gray 
and we want to bring it down here and make it touch the eyes. So when we go into Sew It Pro, so we're going to digitize these to make them be satin and this be a fill, the black eyes be the fill. And then whenever we go into Sew It Pro, we'll be able to change the thread color to where they're both the same black, but they do different stitches. So, okay, so that's all we need. Let's get out of there. And then now we can just go straight over to the stitch image button. Okay, let's bring her out. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to choose is applique center line. Okay, and we're going to choose a run or bean stitch for our. The reason why we choose a bean stitch is it's going to give us two sets of running stitches, and then our final stitch is going to be that pretty bean stitch that makes it look hand sewn. So we're going to click for our applique first, and we're going to make sure that our height is set low and our length is set high. So we're going to have two to four in between there, so you can have a nice, good stitch. And then the bigger the length, the higher the length on the bean stitch, the more hand sewn it looks. Um, but we're just going to go with probably 30 because it just looks nice and it'll just sew right into, into the felt and you won't notice it so much. Okay, so I'm just going to click here at the top. It's going to start where I click. It's, oh, there's that dreaded thing. Mm hmm mm hmm mm hmm This hasn't happened to me in so long. Okay. Close that. Clear stitches. Get out of there. What can we do? Okay. I know that when that has happened to me with a filled image, I can go in and just refill it. Let's try that. Like sometimes the line doesn't know where to go and the colors are all wonky. So see let's see if that helped at all not at all oh no let's go back in there and clear the stitches okay okay so let's fill the inside it's all a learning process People are always saying how nice it is for me to share my knowledge, but I'm really just sharing the product of all of my fumbling. <laughs> oh boy. Now this really stinks because I'm not sure how to fix this. Why would it do that? Is there a break in the line that I can't see? Let's turn the whole line purple and see if we're missing anything. It doesn't look like it, so why? Do I not have it erased enough? Why did that make it black? Oh, because this is so hard. I think maybe they're close together, so they're trying to jump over there. I don't know. We have applique center line two being length of 30. Maybe the length is too high. Maybe it's a combination. <gasps> Looks like it actually worked this time. I'm not sure whether it was the height or if I needed to change that little piece in the middle. But, you know, don't give up. Just keep trying to figure out what's going on and and uh, you'll eventually get there. Okay, so that is what we wanted. Let's just leave it purple. We'll leave it like that. Doesn't look like there's anything jumping. Okay, so then we're going to go to fill and we're going to fill the eyes. Okay, and then we're going to have it jump down here, but we're going to have that be a satin stitch. So we want it just to outline. We don't need it to applique. Outline satin and on the satin you want you want the height high and the length low okay so we'll have 20 and 2 
and that's going to give her her little smile. And we're going to go up here and just do the same with her eyelashes. Oops, I think I clicked on the white. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, so if you're like me, zoom in so you can do this better instead of trying to be a renegade. Okay. So last night I did 10 and 2 for a satin stitch on my eyebrows, and you can barely notice that there's eyebrows there. I mean, you can tell they're eyebrows, but it wasn't what I intended, so I hope that this is. I clicked on the white again. Okay, so let's delete that white. Okay, so it's all done. It's that simple. Once you can get your machine and program to cooperate. <laughs> okay, so now we have to file save as. And now I'm not going to save a picture. At this end, it's going to give us right here. Well, let's title it first. Let's take it to our removable disk. And we'll do head and body. And down here, the design scale factor, this will let us resize it after the stitches have already been placed and keep the density and the same, the, keep the same settings, excuse me, essentially as what you're trying to work with whenever you're putting everything together here at the end. Uh, I hope that made sense. I know I just totally gave you a roundabout answer about that. Okay, why do I always start it with a point? Okay, nine. Oh no, it is point nine. So point five. We don't want it that small. Point six. We don't want it that small. Point seven. Oops, not point point seven. Nope, we don't want that big. So point six six. That's too big. Point six five. Okay, so it's going to keep all of your settings the same and make it smaller. So your satin stitch will still look pretty. It'll still be the settings that you gave it. It will just be scaled down to scale with the drawing. I hope that makes total sense to you guys. Okay, so she's done. I am going to bring her over to the machine and um, sew it out. And I'll be back with you guys in a minute with pictures. Talk to you later. Okay, so for those of you with Sew It Pro, we're going to bring it in here. And it looks like um, on without Sew It Pro on Sew Art, you're going to get six stitch outs, okay? I'm just going to tell you really quick. Um, it's it, You're going to get six steps. You're going to have your three applique steps. Oops. You have your three applique steps, and then it's going to give your eyes, your mouth, and then it's going to go back and do the lashes, and it's going to tell you to do silver, but just do the black, okay? So you don't have to have Sew It Pro to make the doll. This just kind of makes things a little bit faster and easier, and you can do a little bit of editing, and I'm going to add a name to this doll. So, Okay, so in here, we're going to go to this PC is where I saved it. I saved my head and body to the machine. Click open. Okay, and in Sew What Pro, you'll kind of get an idea of what it's going to look like whenever it stitches out. It gives you the texture. So that's what our, the winter sage right here, it's, you know, it looks like it's going to be pretty fat, but we don't know until it sews out. We're going to go ahead and change it to black though, so that it, it sews out with the 1999 is what we want to use. Um, we wanted to sew out with the eyes and the mouth and the nose. And I think that we'll be able to join them all together. So let's click out of that. Edit, join threads, join all adjacent threads of same color. And there we go. One color, we'll all stitch out. So excited. <laughs> Okay, so there's the head, the face, and if you want to make it a little bit bigger, click on her, turn her sideways, best you can get. Okay, and then get her up there in the corner, resize. Let's do it in percentages because it's fun to see her grow. Okay. So 125. OK, 
Okay, that's way too big. So let's undo that. Let's make, it's not selected, okay. Let's make it maybe 110. It's 10% more than what she is now. Okay, that one looks like it's, it's big and it fits in our hoop a little bit better. We can twist it. Okay, so it's not much bigger, but you can make her bigger. I'm gonna make her bigger and just leave it at that. I'm gonna go up here to edit and merge, no, file, <laughs> sorry, merge. And I'm gonna go find a font. So I have my font saved on my um, external hard drive. Do, 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 do. Okay, embroidery. And I have these three, these three small ones right here at the front, um, instead of saving them specifically in their um, folder making a bean stitch folder for them because I use them all so often. So I like sweet stuff the best because it's not very formal. And I have PES, even though with having Sew It Pro, you can open any of these. So I'm going to open Ella's, who I'm making this for. Little Miss Ella. Okay. And then this is where it gets cool. I'm going to click Icons. It's going to bring up a bunch of stuff because I haven't cleared out the album folders yet. But you can go in here, see all this F, C, and there's all the ones down there that it's got to load and stuff. It takes forever. You can just go up, delete Adam album folder, and let's delete the one, the big one down on the bottom. Okay, and then let's go ahead and delete F just so you can see. And it's gone. Okay, so L, uh, I need one L, two L, and an A. So no biggie. I'm just going to separate them a little bit so that you can actually read the L and L. Because these will be very small. Okay, so let's click on each of them. Let's turn them. That look about good. Okay. And then, you know, if you want to put some underwear on her or like, you know, if you want her to have like a permanent outfit, you can put a permanent, you can just draw in a permanent outfit and paint, digitize it and file merge it into here. Or you can do it whenever you're creating her and paint her or him. Sorry. Okay, so I think that's about all that I wanted to do for now. So I'm going to click Save As. And it's not going to worry about doing the picture like the other one does. It's just going to bring up the .pes. And I'm going to click Head and Body, but I'm going to also um, put Ella. So maybe I can make a bunch of dolls with Ella's name on it. I think she would love that. Okay, so save. I didn't check the size and it doesn't give us the option to check the size at the end. Oh yeah, but we already sized it. I don't need to check the size, sorry. <laughs> and you can hit icons again and get back to here where you can see everything. Okay, so now that that's done, now I'm going to actually print her out and um, take pictures and I'll be back with you guys in a moment. Thanks so much. Okay, so go ahead and hoop your stabilizer and um, you're gonna, whenever you get it into your machine, this is gonna be step number one. And step number one is really important because it's gonna show you where you wanna put your legs and your arms. So um, it's gonna tack out your die line with just a regular running stitch. And then you're gonna go ahead and decide right now where you want um, your arms and legs to go. And whenever you decide that, tape them with some regular masking tape and just tape it on the outside of the die line. Don't let your tape be inside the doll because that'll cause it to be crunchy and it just kind of takes away from the niceness of the doll. So um, see how they're all 
taped on the outside, kind of in the direction that I want them to be whenever we put her body on. Um, you can, you know, digitize clothes for her on the body, um, underwear, bra, t-shirts, whatever kind of stuff that you want her to be wearing. Um, she's just going to be naked because I didn't think that far ahead. <laughs> so we're just going to take that last big piece of felt and we're going to lay it over the top and we're going to hook it back up onto the machine and we're going to hit number step number two. Step number two is going to put that tie, dye line down. And I didn't get a picture of that part, but... Um, you, you can see the dye line around everything, kind of how the arms are sticking out underneath the felt. And then I went into um, step number four. I skipped step number three. Don't do step number three. And then go to step number four. And it's going to do your face. And you'll see that my eyelashes did end up being too bulky. Um, and then it'll do the, the name on the bottom. And so you flip it over. And we're going to just take another. Oh, I said that last piece, but I meant that first big piece of the two and then we're going to take the very last piece on this part and we're going to tape it to the back um it just nice and neat and that's going to be our backing it's going to cover the ella it's going to cover the face the smile it's going to cover all of that stuff up in the back so that it looks really good and um then whenever we're done we're going to pop it off the the thing the machine <laughs> and we're going to cut it out and you you're going to start cutting just the bottom part and cutting the top layer only and that way you're not cutting the legs as well so lift it up on the side and cut as you're watching behind and make sure that your um, scissors aren't getting anything but you're going to stop at the shoulders and we're going to cut the head out all at once so that's why you're stopping at the shoulders so <clears throat> just go ahead and trim around everything but leave the shoulders up and then once you get done to that point you're just going to want to pop it out and do the trimming in the back you want to trim all the stabilizer and the felt in the back just like you did the front again leaving the shoulders undone and that way whenever you go in to trim the the head and the shoulders which are totally sewn together and you don't have to worry about anything cutting in between it all looks nice and neat and uniform so in a second it'll show you what she looks like when she's all done. Dun, dun, dun. There she is. So um, I'm going to make some dresses for her and I'm going to make some wigs for her. And those aren't really digitizing things. Well, I guess the dresses might be. Um, but I'm not sure if I'm going to go that far. But as far as having to digitize them and create them on the machine and make a video about it. But if you want me to, I definitely will. I guess that's all I was really getting at. I will make a video making showing you how to make the wig and um, and some clothes for her if you want. So please leave me comments or like the heck out of it so I know that that is what you guys are looking for. Thanks so much. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.